This is going to be one of those hit and trial kind of videos where I've never done this before but I like really wanted to give it a shot for the first time. So today I am trying to install Windows subsystem for Linux in my Windows 10 machine. So what is WSL? WSL stands for Windows subsystem for Linux where um, so as a developer you get most of the Linux features like command line tools, utilities, applications directly on Windows unmodified without the overhead of a traditional virtual machine or dual boot setup. Isn't that cool? So they have their entire documentation on this page and uh, so the best way to learn anything is from the documentation so we can explore it in the free in our free time but for now let us just simply try to install WSL on our machine. These are all the cool features that we will get with the WSL. Choose your favorite GNU Linux, run commands such as grep, SED, AWK. We have all the tools like VIM, Emacs, Tmux, all these languages, all these services. Install additional software using your own GNU Linux distribution packet manager. You can do sudo apt get update. You, you would have Windows application using the Unix-like command line shell and we can invoke GNU and Linux applications straight from Windows. So by far, if this works out, this has to be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> let us click on this link, install WSL and let's see what it tells us. So step one, you first have to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux option feature before installing any Linux distribution. So we have to open the PowerShell as administrator and run this command. So I'll quickly hit my Windows key and I will type PowerShell and let me right click it and run it as administrator. Yes, I want that. Let me push it to the side and let me have this this side. So what do I have to do here? I have to run this command dism.exe slash online enable features. So, uh, no restart so what i essentially feel i am not sure what this does but um i feel so okay essentially this is enabling the windows subsystem for linux so let us copy it right from here and let us try to paste it here by pressing our right mouse button and then we press enter and let us see what happens Okay, so it is enabling a few features. Looks like this step might take a bit of time. Let us read the documentation in the meantime. We recommend now moving to step two, updating to WSL2. But if you wish to only install WSL1, you can restart your machine and move to step six. Um, I think so let's go with the newest version. Let's just quickly check what's up with WSL2. Okay, so here they are telling us on their uh, official documentation again that we have many more features in this one and uh, so WSL2 architecture outperforms WSL1 in several ways with the exception of performance across OS file systems and they have a big note over here and lots of reading to do. So I will read it in my free time and I recommend everyone to read it so that they have a much better understanding of what's going on out here. Okay, so what it states here is that they want for x64 systems, this version of this build or higher and similarly for ARM and for lower builds, they want you to up update your windows. Uh, so how to check my windows version? If I simply press windows key and R, I will see this run dialog and if I type in winver and press enter i will see such a dialog box which tells me that i am on windows 10 home single language operating system and my os build version is 19041 oh man it matches this one and 450 so okay i actually need not worry uh, with this because my system is x64 it's not an arm64 system and i have a build which is much higher than this so checks out for me okay so this step was just for checking your windows build and updating your windows before installing wsl2 you must enable the virtual machine platform option feature let's copy this command virtual machine platform and let us execute it 
okay so looks like it requires a restart so in the meantime let me quickly see what we have ahead download the linux kernel update package download the latest package run the update package downloaded in the previous step and once we have this done we have to set wsl2 as our default version okay and as a final step we will install our linux distribution of choice this seems so cool to me and here it tells us that the first time you launch our linux a console window will open and you'll be asked to wait for a minute uh, for files to decompress and be stored on your pc all future launches should take less than a second and this is cool so i'll meet you guys after a quick restart we are back right here after a quick uh, system reboot and uh, we'll continue here from step 4 download the linux kernel update packet so i will click it and if you are on an arm64 machine you might have to download a different package so let me just click this and see what happens so it gets the installer and it finishes its task and so our WSL is hopefully updated to WSL version 2 and then it tells us that set WSL 2 as your default version. So I'll just copy this command from here and paste it out here and see what happens. Okay, looks like a success. So now the next thing that we have to do is we have to head to Microsoft Store and download our favorite Linux distro. Let me quickly open Microsoft Store and say look for Ubuntu 18.08 uh, or maybe 20.04 and what I can do here is I can just simply click on get and it will download the distro for me and then I can just get started with using it. So it's as simple as that, wasn't it cool? After the download is done and the local Ubuntu is installed, we'll see a launch button right here, which means that our Ubuntu is ready to be launched. So let's click on launch and see what happens. So we can see that my Ubuntu is right here that I installed from Windows Store and it does take a couple of minutes it took uh, around five to ten minutes to get started installing this may take a few minutes please create a default unix uh, user account the username does not need to match your windows username okay so let's create a simple username so i supplied it with a sample username and it asks me for a password so let me set up a password and as you guys can see installation is successful and we got a couple of other messages to run as administrator use sudo command welcome to ubuntu 20.4.1 and woohoo this is so cool okay so let us see what all we can do here so if i say something like pwd it will give me the current working directory so if I say ls, so this directory is empty. So I created a file called a.txt here and then if I say cat a.txt, then yeah, we get the contents of those files. And what if I say sudo apt get update? So yeah, it's working on the update. So it works exactly as a Ubuntu system would and yeah it's done with the updates how about i install the small package let's say let's install git sudo apd get install git and yeah so git is already installed in ubuntu so cool our ubuntu system on linux so if i want to try out more distros i could just go to microsoft store and i can search for my favorite linux over here and yeah there we have so many distros ubuntu kali linux suse linux debian and so much so i think that this is pretty cool we have our 
own Ubuntu system running in our Windows machine. So this is like personally for me, <laughs> this is unheard of. Like I knew there is something called WSL, but this is the first time I tried it. So thank you all for watching and I hope you get your Linux up and running in Windows if you want. So if you find this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you find the content of my channel helpful, please subscribe. Thank you all for watching.